Oprah's foundation has served 75 million meals and donated $400 million to food insecurity. And it all started when Oprah transformed a low rated morning talk show into the Oprah Winfrey show in 1986 and ran it for 25 years. Around that same time, she started Harpo Productions to have creative control over her productions. In 2000, she launched the Oprah Magazine. In 2011, she partnered with Discover Inc. to launch the Oprah Winfrey Network dedicated to self-discovery and growth. In 2015, she purchased 10% of Weight Watchers. 75 million meals served. And it all started with Perseverance Through Childhood, a low-rated morning talk show, and 25 years of consistency. Be consistent like Oprah was and build a foundation that can help you create an impact like Oprah does. Of course, you might be sitting there and you're like, 25 years of consistency? I'm literally not even 25 years old. Like me, I am literally not 25 years old and you might not be either. Or 25 years ago, you were 10. 25 years ago, you might have been 20. That's still very young. If you're 50, you haven't even been, if you're not 50, you haven't been 25 years old twice, if that makes sense. Like you haven't lived through that period of time twice. So it's a lot of your life. It's probably more than half of your life for the majority of the people listening. So when you're thinking, okay, Timmy, you're telling me to be consistent like Oprah, but that's a long time to be consistent. Like, how do I even know if it's going to work? How do I be consistent? What, where do I add value? Like all these questions, let's go through them. So the first thing I thought people would ask, because really it's the first thing I asked when I was looking at the reel was consistency in and of itself doesn't build a foundation. So what should I be consistent with? And that is a great point because everybody here has been consistent with something for the entirety of their life. And it's very simple stuff, but it's still consistent, i.e. breathing. You consistently breathe. Your body has been consistently digesting food. Your heart has been consistently pumping all of these stuff necessary to your life. And then you have consistently watched the emotions and the body language of the people around you and reacted to it. Every human consistently does that, which takes a lot of work. In fact, we live most of our life based on that fact right there. And that's why so many people have an issue with people pleasing because they're reading the room and they're trying to seek approval because they feel it is necessary to their survival as a human. So we've consistently done things that are necessary to our survival, but we've also built other habits that show us we are a consistent person. We brush our teeth. Many of us floss. Many of us exercise. Many of us eat food consistently. And those are all positive things. But we also do negative things consistently. Many of us consistently eat too much sugar, consistently sit on our butt, consistently don't do our work, consistently don't show up for ourselves. And so we are all extremely consistent. We just have to take that energy of being consistent and point it in the direction we want to go. And so yes, consistency in and of itself doesn't build a foundation. Actually it does. It builds a foundation, but maybe not one that's in the direction you want to go. So if you're building a foundation, how do you decide what type of foundation to build? And I always start with being extremely clear on who you are and where you want to go because you can always walk backwards. For example, if Oprah had seen herself now and 25, 30, 35, 40 years ago, she had said, huh, if I want to be worth $3 billion in 2023 and I want to be a media tycoon and just impact so many lives, it has to start with being really good at something. I need something I can leverage disproportionately that will give me value in the marketplace that will allow me to impact the people that I'm looking to impact. And if she had reverse engineered that and she had seen that radio and television was growing at the rapid pace it was back in the 80s and she realized there weren't any huge stars then and um, if she had perfect foresight and she saw the power of the internet and how that was going to come in to play, that would have been very ideal, right? She would have plotted out a path for her that was like, yes, be consistent with this one thing because it will grow 
2000% year over year for the next 25 years. And so naturally your audience base will grow, which she probably also had an understanding of leverage, right? It's like the more people I can get behind me and behind the cause, the more change I can make. And so for that reason, I'm gonna stick with media for 25 years. She could have said that if she had plotted out Oprah worth 3 billion in 2023 to that moment where she was right then and there with the opportunity she had in front of her, right? Is this opportunity a vehicle that is going to take me where I want to go or do I need to get into another vehicle? And Warren Buffett talks about this a little bit. It is not necessarily about how hard you row, but more about the vehicle that you're in. Like he had a friend that was working way harder than he was and probably ended at a meager wealth compared to his. Like his friend was probably around 10 million, 20 million, 30, maybe $40 million just working in an industry that was hard work every day, just working hard. And then Warren was just like buying businesses and selling businesses and getting really good at that. And now he's worth a hundred billion and his friend isn't even worth a hundred million. And that's literally because of the boat that they were in. Warren Buffett was in like a cruise ship and he was in like a little canoe. And because of that, the cruise ship went a lot further. So be consistent in a manner that is going to build a foundation that will take you where you want to go. And that means knowing who you are, knowing where you want to go, really big picture. And then walking it back to the moment you're in right now and say, hey, is the vehicle I'm in building that foundation? And if it is, be consistent with that vehicle and figure out a way to track it to make sure you're on pace moving in that direction. So I'd say that's how you be consistent and that's how you decide what to be consistent with. Pick a vehicle that's gonna get you to where you want to go based on knowing who you are and where you want to go. And then track it along the way and course correct as you can. So how do you know what moves to make once the foundation is built? Like Oprah was consistent on her show for 25 years, but she also did stuff like buy Weight Watchers, start her own creative company, start uh, a few other things like the Oprah Winfrey Magazine and the network with Discover, Oprah Winfrey Network, right? How do you know what moves to make once the foundation is built? And it's really skill compounding. When she turned her talk show from a low rated morning talk show into the Oprah Winfrey show, she started Harpo Productions and that allowed her to have creative control over what she was doing. That's really like you want to own what you do. You want the equity of what you do. Because as your brand grows and as your equity power grows, you want to own that cash flow, you want to own that equity because then you can leverage that into stacking more skills on top of it, like getting the magazine. Like because she owned Harpo Productions and the Oprah Winfrey Show took off, her magazine did well. Weight Watchers did well because of that media. She was able to get into a partnership with Discover Inc. to have the Oprah Winfrey Network. All of that did well because she was able to leverage Harpo Productions and the clout from her show. If the show wasn't about her, and if she wasn't the main star, it would've been really hard to leverage that and get to where she was trying to go. But because she owned it, she was able to stack it. So first step, own what you're doing. Create something where you can own the vehicle in which it's growing. And maybe that means you're working at a job for 10 years until you can buy it from your boss. Or maybe it looks like going to start your own thing or going to buy your own business, but figure out a way you can own 100% or the majority of, or even the minority of a really big thing of what you are doing. And once you own it, start stacking other things you own on top of it. That compounds your skills. So if you have the media skill, you saw she went from media to a magazine, different form of media, because she already had an audience that wanted that. In addition to the magazine, a partnership with Discover Inc., also media. And then after that, she ventured into business. So she stacked skills, stacked skills, stacked skills, and from all the negotiating, from understanding the business of media, she was probably like, oh, other businesses aren't that different, let me buy Weight Watchers. And then she bought Weight Watchers, and now she has her foundation, and she's bought 75 million meals. And all of that was because she was able to stack skills. It all started with being a really good talk show host on the Oprah Winfrey Show, then Harpo Productions, then the magazine, then the Discover Inc. partnership, then buying Weight Watchers for 10%, and it built the wealth that she now has. So, 
first move, once the foundation is built, is figure out a way to own that foundation. After you own that foundation, figure out other things you can stack on the foundation that fit. And that fit is, it makes sense. It's compounding your skills. And when you do that, make sure you own that piece of the pie as well. And your wealth will grow, which means your impact will grow. And so how can you add value where you're currently at is really the question. Because you got to pick the right vehicle. And then once that vehicle's picked and you're being consistent with it, you built that foundation, you need to understand what moves to make next, which means you probably need to know who you can look at. But right now you're at the beginning. You're in a vehicle and you need to add value and be consistent in adding value to build that foundation to then know what moves to make once that foundation is built. So how do you add value where you are currently? And that really looks like seeking out problems where you are currently. Go to your boss, be like, hey, where's the business struggling? Where can I take this business to the next level? Or go to the industry you're in and interview people at the top of the industry and be like, dude, what problems are you experiencing? And just understand the problems and start brainstorming solutions and start brainstorming offers around that solution. And then do that offer for free for a couple people. And once you get some testimonials, start to um, charge people. And once you start to charge people, up the price. Then build some systems around it. Get a team around it. And that's really how the process starts. It starts with thinking of a problem, or identifying a problem, thinking of a solution, executing that solution for free, executing that solution for money. And that money can come in the form of increased pay, or equity in the company that you're at, or it can come in, um, you know, running a business and owning the asset. But ultimately, you either want to be buying equity in the company you work for or starting your own company where you do have equity. Because again, when you own the vehicle that is taking you to where you want to go, you can capture all of the upside, and the more you capture, the more you can give away. You can't get away what you don't have. So thank you guys for listening. We will see you on the next one. That's all we got for you on today's show. But remember, we are a community of people judged not by our wealth, but by our impact.